Hey guys, this is Little Gamer out, and welcome to my channel and part three of the Get Together LP. Um, we have all the guys here. They pretty much have become night owls. They sleep all day and they're up all night. And when you're like a part of the club scene, that just the way that's just the way it happens, and that's just the way things are. Um, it is Saturday, and they're all getting ready to go out to the nightclub um, to kind of. You know, give it another go. They're going to go to the Narwhal Arms tonight. So all of them are going to go. Quinn, Carmen, and Kale. And so they're just going to go out and have some fun tonight. And, you know, maybe get into a little trouble. I don't know. Um, the girls did go out last night. Um... And kind of had a girls' night while the guys kind of stayed at home and just hung out and chilled out a little bit. And the girls kind of ran into a couple of the Spin Masters group. And, yeah, that was not the uh, prettiest thing. <laughs> Gwen ended up face planting right in front of Candy. And she, Candy just kind of, like, laughed and just snickered and just didn't take her seriously. There was a huge, like... Like, what the heck? And we're going to um, maybe... Let's pause this for a second. And... Okay. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> this is another thing that's happened. Because uh, I did play a little bit off camera. And they ordered their... Uh, kind of like their club uniform, if you will. And it was not what they had expected. Um, all the colors on the website of the shirts looked like they were the exact same shade of orange. And the girls' shirts ended up coming out yellow. And it was just like, it was just kind of like a blow. It was like, are you kidding me right now? And the material on the guy's shirt ended up, as you can see, it's see-through. And that was not at all what they had thought. They just thought it was like a, again, the pictures did not leave up to the actual product. But it's what they have. They really don't have the money to go and get whole new uniforms. And so they're going to just stick with this. And it still gives them a sense of unity and uniformity in a way. Um, but they're, they were disappointed. And the jeans were not gray. They ended up coming out blue. And so they were kind of like, oh my god, are you kidding me right now? But overall, you can tell that they are together as a group, as I guess you could say. And so we're just going to have to work with it. And... They had that moment of just disappointment, but then they just picked themselves up. And it was Quinn this time who stepped up and he was just like, you know what? This is what we got. And hey, we still look fly as hell. So yeah. So this is this is their little uniform for right now. It's their like beginner starter uniform until they can, you know, you know, acquire enough money to really upgrade and really get a nice, you know, cohesive uh, club uniform going on. So, anyways, we are here at the club, and this is their first time stepping out in their uniform, and so they're confident, and they're not going to let anybody come and rain on their parade. So we're going to have them all go in, and maybe have, let's see, we're going to have Murgatroyd order drinks for everybody. Order drinks for the group. And we're going to have them have, let's see, what do we want them to have? I guess we're going to have um, a barley bell, like a, basically a beer, I guess. And he is very embarrassed still because he, right before I started recording, he was trying to get, he had to use the bathroom really, really bad. And it was like literally one person after another kept on jumping in front of him. And he ended up using the bathroom on the floor. Like, he could not hold it anymore. And love his little heart. He ended up, like, accidentally peeing on himself. And he, so he's still kind of embarrassed about that. Even though nobody was there, nobody saw it. But still, you know, it's just one of those things, you know you did it. <laughs> that's, that's enough. Uh, but, yeah, they're out here, and they're just hanging out and um, having a, a little drink before they actually get out here and uh, party. Let's see. We really don't have any of the other dance clubs here at the moment. And so 
they're kind of, I don't know, I think after, especially for Quinn, after last night's little debacle with the Spin Masters, she's kind of relieved that they're, that she doesn't have to face them. But she's constantly keeping an eye out for that blonde and pink hair. Because <laughs> she does not want, she does not want to face that candy girl at all right now. Because she's just like, but she's definitely working on her dance moves and that backflip because she's determined now and that's the thing about this group they make a mistake they want to fix it asap they don't let it get them down they have that they they, they allow themselves to have that moment of like uh, of embarrassment or frustration but they don't live in it and they don't let it dictate what they go, do from there they just it motivates them to get up and make it better you know what i'm saying and so that's what i love about these guys and they support each other you know even if <laughs> someone messes up the group dance they don't get mad at the person they help them work through it so they can make it better and just that support that they get from each other and so here we have them dancing what is she getting ready to do quinn what are you doing show off move okay well, go ahead show it off Show them what you got. Let's do the light spin because I really, really like the light spin. It's so flashy and, you know, colorful and sparkly. So we're going to have her do that maybe. Keeps Xing out. I don't know what's happening there. Okay, there she goes. She's doing it. Let's see. I wonder if I can have the group dance. Let's see. Dance together. And we're going to kind of entertain the crowd and kind of get, you know used to performing because that's a huge thing that they really need to work on together as a group and they know this but this is a happening little place we like this place because this is where like i said where they came last night the girls and so aside from candy being a little brat and mocking quinn they really like the atmosphere of this club and it's really it's a really just like lively happening place so let's see so let's see if we can't get them go ahead and dance together really quickly. And get this done. So hopefully. Okay, let's see. Can we do this? Okay, they're all dancing, but let's do a group dance and let's um let's break it down. Okay kind of speed through this. Are they going to do it? Uh, I don't know. Okay, here they go. Here they go. I just love this. It is so awesome. I don't know which way they're facing here. Okay. There they go. They're doing it. Well, Quinn's not. <laughs> Quinn is just like so like in a non-work mindset right now. <laughs> But the other three are really doing it. So, yeah, that's good. And look how good they are. And Quinn is just, like, drunk and not paying attention. Look at her doing the little duck lip thing there. So, yeah, Quinn, I don't know what's up with Quinn tonight. She is just, like, in her own little universe. And that's fine. It's good. Um, Cameron just became good friends with Quinn. Okay, we already knew that. But I think they just got a really extra little bond going now that they're actually living together. Just kind of took it to another, like a sister level, if you will. Like, they really feel like family now. And that's so awesome. I just love it. Sue. So, uh, there goes Kale showing off his moves. And the crowd is absolutely loving Kale's. He's just like a showman. You know what I'm saying? And he's just like, he loves being in the spotlight. So what else can we have Kale do? <gasps> oh, he nailed it. That is freaking awesome. I love it. That was the move that got Quinn last night. And let's see if we can't get Quinn out here to do that. Let's see. Show off moves and do a backflip. Let's see if we can get her to do it. Okay. Everybody needs to move. <laughs> So Quinn, here's the here's the moment of truth. Can Quinn do it? Boom! She nailed it. Ah, oh, yeah. Look at her now. She's got the confidence. Look at her. 
<laughs> she thinks she hurt her back. But it's cool. She did it still. And that's all that matters. Um, electrifying. She is really feeling the music and loving it. And let's see. Let's have, um, let's have her dance battle with, uh, Where's Quinn at? Can we not dance battle with Quinn? Um, now we'll do a dance battle with Kel because Cameron and Kel have this kind of like they're really good friends, like they're super, super close. But they have this kind of little competition with each other. And so she loves to challenge him to dance battles. And he does the same thing to her. He's constantly like, you know, surprising her, like jumping on her, like, hey, you gotta do this. So hopefully, let's see what we get going on here. And now they're making a bet. <laughs> they're like, I bet you I can win this dance battle. If everybody would get it out of Cameron's way. So hopefully, come on, Cal, you going to do it. They are really, like, lighting up this place, though. Okay. There, okay, I'm not going to do it. Nope. Dance battle, okay, I don't know why it takes them so long to do this. Okay. Oh, look at Kel. He, <laughs> he's like, oh, you did that? Because, you know, they practice each together, so they know. Oh, <laughs> Kel hit her in the eye. Oh, my gosh. He was being too, not taking it seriously at all. But he definitely has the backflip down. It is just so funny to watch them because, you know, again, they live together. They practice it together. And they know what each other can do. And so when they get out in public, they just have fun with it. And they goof off. And they're just like, oh, they over-animate there. Oh, you're so good. Oh, that was awesome. You know what I'm saying? So I just love the dynamic between these guys so much. Um, it is 3.30 in the morning, and I think we're going to have all these guys go home. And, yeah, so they had a good night. Everybody is starting to recognize them, and they are starting to, you know, people are starting to talk, you know, because they get out there and they just do their thing, and they don't let anybody stop them. And everybody just keeps on getting in Carmen's way today. I don't know what's up with that. So we'll be right back as soon as they get to... Okay, everyone is home, and Cal has already jumped in the bed. He is exhausted, and we're going to have Murgatroyd mop up his little mouse that he left. And he is dazed, and he is, like, feeling really good right now. Like, he just loves being out in that music. It's just his, it's his comfort zone. Okay, go ahead and use the bathroom. I don't know what you're waiting on. Just go do it. And she's hungry, so we're going to have her get something to eat. And where are you at, Cameron? Everything. She is chill. Cameron is definitely not a high-maintenance person. She's very low-key, very chill. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's not a very demanding person. Everybody else kind of is. But she seems to be very relaxed and just, like, doesn't need too much. And, oh, my God, I'm so sick of this. We don't have the money. Somebody's going to have to get a job. And that's going to suck because that's going to take away a lot of time from their dancing. But they know. Okay, Quinn is a geek. These Sims need to play games and are great at finding rare collection items. Okie dokie. So, Karen, she's just got back from the club and she is still going. She is like, I've got my second win and I am ready to dance. I've got all this excess energy. So, she's awesome like that. She just can't help her. Oh, my God. Look at her go. She just, like, laying it out like that. Like, wah. Listen at me. Like, wah. And there is Murgatroyd. Like, Murgatroyd, <laughs> I have to say, Murgatroyd and Cal are having a conversation. Of course, you know, they're talking about girls and dating and stuff like that. And, you know, because they've been living here for a while now, and they really haven't, none of these guys have really had much time really to date or to meet people. And so they were kind of talking about it. And, you know, and Kale was just like, have you ever, you know, been in love? And so they kind of had this semi-deep conversation about, 
you know, relationships and stuff like that in their own personal experience. And Kel, or no, not Kel, I'm sorry, Murgatroyd kind of let it slip, something that he has been holding in for a very long time. And that is, okay, they're having a group gathering at 5.30 in the morning. Anyways, um, he kind of let it know that he, he, he has had a, you know, really strong feelings for someone before, and it's only been one person, and he kind of just, he didn't really let it slip who it was, but he said that it's something that they all knew, it's someone that they're all kind of, that they all know, and that they've been close to, and stuff like that. And Kel was like, oh my god, is it Quinn? Is it Cameron? Who is it? And he kind of named off a few other people that they all knew and stuff like that. And Murgatroyd just would not let him know, you know, because he, he just is afraid that if he tells anybody who this mystery woman is, that it will really mess things up for a lot of people and he doesn't want to be responsible for that and he's always had this little bitty crush you know what I'm saying for her but it's only been recently since that it's really feels like it's grown like it's something when she when he sees her walk into the room it's like his heart skips a beat and he gets these butterflies and he is so confused about it and I'm like oh my gosh poor Murgatroyd what's he going to do and what he doesn't want to tell anybody is that it's Cameron like he has had you know a little crush on her for you know a little while at first it was just very subtle and it was just like whatever because they have been friends for a very, very long time, and really, really super close, obviously, and he just kind of pushed it aside, you know what I'm saying, because he's always had the utmost respect for her, and he's always admired her, you know, determination, and her talent, and just her focus, and she just has this great personality, and she's just this awesome person that everybody just really likes and so he just thought you know it's just me thinking too much about it so he's always pushed it aside but now that they're actually living in the same house it's like he is faced with her every day you know and he sees her in those little moments when she first wakes up and her hair is all messed up and she has no makeup on or you know in her rumple clothes and he sees her at her very realist moments and that's how he knows this is not just some little goofy thing or misunderstanding because when he sees her like that that's when he thinks she is the cutest and he just finds that he smiles he finds himself smiling to himself when he sees her you know walking you know through the house scratching her rear as she stumbles to the bathroom first thing when she wakes up you know what I'm saying just that every little thing she does he just finds endearing and cute and he's just like oh shit I am in so much trouble right now because I am having more than just friendship feelings for Cameron. I'm actually like, and this isn't just some little fly-by-night crush. I'm really having feelings for her. And uh, she's, I don't know, he's just, he has found himself fantasizing, you know, about being in a relationship with her and, and about him telling her, this is how I really feel. You know what I'm saying? And he does have those moments where if he envisions her jumping up and wrapping her arms around his neck and going, I feel the same way. But then reality sets in and like, there's a very real chance that he tells her and she rejects him. And it totally messes up the whole dynamic of their group that they're just really starting to get organized and started. And so he doesn't want to be the one that messes that up. You know what I'm saying? So he is just keeping it to himself. And of course, Cal is just like, who is she? Who is she? Who is she? Do I, you know, do I know her? Like, he kind of said Queen and Cameron, but he's like, no, no, no. We're all just really good friends. And he's, he's never seen any flirtation between the two. And so Cal was like, he's kind of clueless. Like, he doesn't really suspect it's either Cameron or Quinn at this point. But he's just like, oh, man, I got to know. So he's kind of like trying to be little, like, mystery machine here and try to figure out who it could possibly be but he's at a loss like he can't figure it out for nothing um where's quinn at she's out there texting oh the toilet is messed up didn't i just buy a dang toilet 
Okay, go use the bathroom, Quinn, honey. Before you use the bathroom all over yourself. Okay, she's just kind of, like, dazed out. I think she's kind of, like, in that sleep-deprived zombie mode at this point. <laughs> and I think everybody needs to probably go to bed. But, yeah, Murgatroyd, I don't know what he's going to do. Love his heart. He just does not know what to do about Cameron. It's just like she's so close but so far. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know how he's going to handle this. Um, I I wouldn't mind honestly seeing them, you know, give it a go. But at the same time, it runs the huge risk of really messing up the group. Because if it doesn't work out, she rejects him. That's just going to be a very awkward, uncomfortable situation for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody's friends, really good friends with each other. You know what I'm saying? And that could possibly cause some sort of divide or... You know what I'm saying? You just... It's a risky thing for to do. You know what I'm saying? And that's why he's really just keeping it to himself. And he's just trying to distract himself. And he's he's really trying to, to talk himself out of these feelings at this point. But it is so difficult. Like, he walked in on her this morning and she was in the shower. And it was just like, oh, no. Because he knows how he feels. And now he feels like, oh, my gosh, she thinks I'm a creeper now. You know what I'm saying? You know how that works. You know how you feel about someone, so everything, every, you start questioning everything you do. Like, you think everybody else knows. You know what I'm saying? And so that's kind of how he's feeling. So he's actually kind of have distanced himself a tad bit from her. Like, he tries to avoid, like, a lot of contact with her without it being obvious or anything like that because he's trying to emotionally dis distance himself from her. I don't know, it's very confusing for him. And he knows if it is for him, it's going to probably screw up everybody else as well. But I I don't know. I don't know. I think everybody would be happy as long as they're both happy about it. But I think it, one person rejects it, and I think it's going to really make things really overly complicated. I don't know. We will see how it works out. But they had a good night, and I think they're all getting pretty dang tired now. Cameron definitely. Yeah, everybody's getting really exhausted now. Because it is 10.30 in the morning and they have been out all freaking night. Uh, no, we don't take naps. On. We're just going to go to sleep. Go to sleep. And he's hungry, so we're going to have him stop. And Quinn, go to bed. No, why does everybody just want to take naps? Just go to bed. And you need to go to sleep as well. Put the game down. Ah, oh, come on, Cal. Go to sleep. Why won't he go to his bed? Get off the couch. There we go. I don't know why everybody wants to take naps all the time. Like they never want to actually go to sleep. <laughs> I don't get it. And we'll have him go ahead and go to sleep. And we're going to end this part here and leave with the questions of what Murgatroyd is going to do about his feelings for our Cameron. Because she is definitely a lovable girl. Like, she's hot, talented, smart, and she's got it all. You know what I'm saying? And he is, uh, I don't I don't want to say he's falling in love with her, but I think that he is well on his way. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, now that they live together, he sees her first thing in the morning and the last thing at night and it's just like it adds this extra element of closeness and bonding and that's just enforcing his feelings that he really wasn't taking very seriously before the little crush the little like you know crushy feelings he was having for her has just multiplied since he's moved in with her and yeah and she is beautiful and look at her I just adore, and I would just hate though that for him, for her to reject him, and it just totally mess up. Or they get together and they give it a go, and it doesn't work out, and then it's even more awkward. I don't know. I, I really don't know because you know that's a sticky situation. You could you could really end a friendship really quickly by trying to take it to that next level and he is well aware of that and so that's why he's being trying to be extra cautious but it is really difficult for him 
to try to push these feelings away that just keep growing and he can't control it it's like this monster that is just taking over him and so yeah i hope that it ends well for everybody but anyways we will get again we'll end this part here and i will see you guys next time in part four and y'all have a good day bye